Welcome back to another video by Facts Near Me. It was the year 1979 in South Africa. Tim Jenkin and Stephen Lee were both serving time in the notorious Pretoria Central Prison for their involvement in the anti-apartheid movement. The prison was known for its high security and strict regulations. But Tim and Stephen were determined to escape. They spent months studying the prison layout and observing the routines of the guards. They realized that the keys to the cells were not kept on the guards' persons, but were instead stored in a nearby office. The two men began to devise a plan to obtain the keys and make their escape. They began by creating wooden replicas of the keys using sketches they had made of the keys during their observations. The replicas were not perfect, but they were good enough to fool the locks on the cell doors. Next, they made a decision to fabricate a story about their interest in printing as a way to gain access to the prison's print shop, where they could make copies of the keys. They began to take note of the guards' schedule and routines, and soon they were able to make a perfect replica of the keys. With the keys in hand, Tim and Stephen were ready to make their escape. They waited for the right moment. And on the night of December 11th, the day of their escape finally arrived. Tim and Stephen were ready. They used their wooden key replicas to unlock their cell doors and made their way to the main gate of the prison. They were able to slip past the guards and make their way into the dense forest surrounding the prison. They were not able to take the main road as it was highly guarded. So they decided to take a different route through the dense forest. Their journey through the wilderness was not easy. They had to navigate through rough terrain, avoid wild animals, and evade the police who were searching for them. They had to rely on their knowledge of the wilderness and their resourcefulness to survive. They also had to be careful not to leave any trace behind, as they knew that the police would be looking for them. After several days of traveling through the wilderness, Tim and Stephen finally reached the border of South Africa, where they crossed into Botswana and sought asylum. They were able to contact the anti-apartheid movement and were eventually able to leave the country. Tim and Stephen's escape from Pretoria Central Prison was not an easy feat. They faced many challenges and obstacles along the way. The two men had to be extremely careful not to raise any suspicions. As they knew that the prison guards were always on the lookout for any signs of an escape attempt. One of the biggest challenges they faced was obtaining the materials they needed to make their wooden key replicas. They had to be resourceful and use whatever materials they could find within the prison. They used pieces of wood from their beds, pencils, and even melted plastic from their toothbrushes to create the keys. It was a time-consuming process, but they were determined to succeed. Another obstacle they faced was the harsh conditions in the prison. The cells were overcrowded, and the inmates were not given adequate food or medical care. Tim and Stephen had to endure these harsh conditions while also planning their escape. They were also subjected to interrogation and harsh punishment by the prison guards who suspected that they were planning an escape. called Escape from Pretoria which was later adapted into a movie with the same name. Their story continues to inspire people around the world and serves as a reminder of the power of determination and the human spirit. The end of apartheid came in 1994 with the election of Nelson Mandela the president of South Africa. Tim and Stephen returned to South Africa after the end of apartheid and continued to be active in the anti-apartheid movement. They both passed away peacefully in recent years, but their legacy lives on as a testament to the power of courage and resilience in the face of adversity.